Hello, uh, welcome to this part one of me painting Port Isaacs in North Cornwall. It's the uh, port they use in the TV series uh, Doc Martin, and uh, I was lucky enough to visit there um, 2018, I think it was, and took a load of reference photographs. And this is one appealed to me most. It's a very long, well, the the Part 1 and Part 2 combined will be a very long video, so that's why I've split them as this is just one big mass of fine detail. But hope you enjoy. Please uh, like and subscribe if you could, that would be much appreciated. I hope you uh, stay with me all the way through to Part 2. Thank you. On this painting I'm starting in a slightly different way to normal and that's uh, I'm not doing a underpainting. I thought because of the uh, millions of houses I couldn't face doing everything twice. So I took my reference photo into Photoshop and averaged out all the colours and this sort of uh, slightly browny grey is what came out and I've put this colour all over the board and trace the buildings onto that. This background colour is very good for the houses and the little bit of um, sand at the bottom but not so much for the sky so I will have to do the sky in a couple of coats to completely get rid of the brownie grey. The way I'm going to tackle all these houses is to choose a little area, pick out the main colours and mix those up. The colours in between I can mix on the fly and just uh, methodically go around placing the colours where they should go and uh, treat it a bit like a paint by numbers. The accuracy of the colour being the critical part here. When it comes to mixing the colours accurately, I basically use Mark Carder's method in the YouTube channel Draw Mix Paint. I couldn't do a better job of explaining how it's done than Mark can, so I'll put a link in the description to his video on the method used. A major part of painting these houses is the ability to do an extremely fine line and to achieve this you need to thin the paint with some sort of solvent, I use white spirit, and keep adding the solvent until it just flows enough so you can get a fine line but not too much as to make the paint very sort of watery and thin and transparent.
I now have a line of trees to deal with and some patches of grass. If you've watched my other landscape videos, you may have noticed I closely follow Michael James Smith's method for doing trees and foliage. But here, the area is a little too tight, so I'm going to have to modify it a bit. I'm going to start the normal way and put a base color down. But then the next stage is to go over that base color with a dark, stipply sort of pattern with the tree and texture brush. But there isn't the space to use that, so I'm just going to have to use a much, much smaller brush and just sort of stipple the uh, darker areas in. I've done the mid-tones and shadows on the foliage, but I'm going to leave it to dry before doing the highlights. So I'm back to the housing. Well, it took me a while to get back to doing the highlights as uh, I got sidetracked in doing the foliage on the right hand side. So the basic technique here is to pick a color that's a little bit warmer than the uh, mid-tones. So that means mostly adding a little bit of yellow and white and just spotting it in where you see it on the reference photo.
I'm getting into quite a routine now where I paint the main shapes of each house and then immediately go after with the details. I'm finding it's not necessary to wait until the base colours dry. Well, I think uh, I'm going to end part one here. All the smaller houses in the background are, are done and I've just started the larger foreground houses, which hopefully won't take quite as long as the background ones because they're bigger and they're therefore a bit easier, I think. Who knows? We shall see. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when part two comes out. And as always, uh, Check the description where there's all sorts of links to uh, my website, Instagram, where you can see the latest things I'm up to and where you'll be able to buy prints of this painting and all of my other paintings. Thank you for watching. See you in part two.